Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Lizzie and today we are discussing my bookish bugbears. Now yes, as a British person I should say pet peeves but alliteration is more important. So these are my bookish bugbears. I'm pretty sure there is a tag for this but this isn't a tag, I'm just complaining about things. This is a this is a ranty complaining video so I hope you're ready to complain about some bookish things with me. So these are little things, or some not so little things, in and surrounding books that annoy me. I have sorted these into two main categories. So one of them is about the physical book itself, and the other one is plot, tropes, inside of the book, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, these are the things that annoy me. Maybe they're your favourite thing. I can't imagine many of them will be, but they might be. Either way, I hope you're ready to hear me rant about them for an undisclosed period of time. So without any further ado, let's get to the ranting. First of all, I feel like this is a universal one. When books, and especially classics, classics are the worst for this, but when books have spoilers in the blurb. If it is on the outside of the book, I do not want to know. I want to read it from the inside of the book. Do not tell me on the outside what happens. I want to find out on the inside. That is why I bought this book. There are certain books, especially classics, very well-known stories, where sometimes life passes you by and you don't know the famous plot point. Jane Eyre. I didn't know the twist in Jane Eyre until I read it. And I loved that because then I could experience it and be angry at it in real time. However, my copy of Little Women, which I don't have with me to show you, but my copy of Little Women, I did not know the plot of Little Women. I knew next to nothing about Little Women when I bought this book secondhand from a charity shop. It's a Penguin Classics, an old timey Penguin Classics edition. Now this is going to be spoilers for Little Women and an episode of Friends. Because you know what's coming. <laughs> if you've seen that episode of Friends or any film of Little Women, I didn't know. I didn't know and I wanted to stay not knowing until I'd read the book and it literally said on the back it was like generations of girls have fallen in love with Joe's independence and da 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 and you know something about Meg and something about Amy and cried when little Beth died. Spoilers! Spoilers! Yes the book had been out for over a hundred years but but if I wanted to read it I wanted to know what happened in the book don't put the spoilers on the outside of the book next one in the same vein I'm already riled up <laughs> when a book does not say that it is a sequel now I'm indifferent to like you know numbers on the spine well however you put it you know sequel to the best-selling such and such and such uh, you know, following on from, or even little pictures of the other ones on the back, or even inside somewhere, just anywhere on the book, saying that it's a sequel, um, so that I don't buy it, put it on Goodreads, and realise it's not the first one in the series. Or that it's like, you know, sometimes I didn't even realise it was part of a series, and I didn't realise that it wasn't the first one. And then, I, then I had it and I didn't want to read it because it wasn't the first one. <laughs> I do a lot of my book shopping blind. I certainly used to do a lot more as well. You know, I go into a charity shop. I go into a discount bookstore and see what looks good to me. I don't necessarily, unless I'm going to Waterstones, I tend not to plan ahead. I just go and see what's there. So if it doesn't say it's a sequel, I won't know it's a sequel, especially if there's bad signal and I can't look it up on Goodreads. So yes, publishers, please put on the book, if it is a sequel, if it is part of a series. Tell me. This next one, this might be the biggest one. It's certainly the longest standing. This has bugged me since 10 year old me bought my movie tie-in edition, because it was cheaper, of Stormbreaker from Waterstones in like 2006 or something. And this is when there are pictures, you know there's like picture sheets with like the thick paper that's shiny in the middle? And it just interrupts the text. It just interrupts it. There are chapters. There are chapters. Why not put the pictures in between chapters? 
I, I'm gonna pick a book that I know has pictures in, and I bet without even planting it, I could find one that, like the first one I find, the pictures will be mid sentence. I'm gonna find a book. I just feeling the top of the picture. Okay, second one, lucky. Elizabeth, The Apprentice Years by David Starkey. Does this have pictures? Or is it just lumpy? It does have pictures. Oh, would you look at that? Okay. Look, mid-sentence. And then I've got... Oh, I've got my phone. So we're mid-sentence. And I've got one, two, three, four pages of shiny pictures before the sentence carries on. What's that about? Ah, and there's more pictures. I bet. I bet the other pictures. Yep. There we go. Look, another mid sentence. And then I think another four pages. One, two, three, four pages before the sentence carries on. Now, I don't want to waste all of our time by picking up every book that has pictures in and checking, but I would put money on all of them being mid sentence. <laughs> If by some miracle someone is watching this who works in publishing and knows why it is impossible to put them on chapter breaks, please tell me. There must be a good reason. Like, so much thought goes into every part of a book. Like, and this is, you know, it's, there's, there's a cover on everything. It's like so much, so much thought has gone into this, like, you know, creation of this physical object. And then it got to that and they were like, nah, we're just gonna stick the pictures in at exactly a third and exactly two thirds. Just put them on the chapter break, just put them on the chapter break. This next one annoyed me so much, I made a 20 minute video about uh, how feminism is used to market books and it's misleading taglines. When you stick some buds words in a tagline and it doesn't, pan out i feel like this is another universal one i don't need to go into depth but yeah that one that one is an annoying one as well now this next one it's about the inside of the book but it's not really about the story it's about it's about the punctuation this is one of many reasons why i don't enjoy sally rooney books it's the reason one of one of the reasons i dnf'd wolf hall and that is the lack of speech marks i just they exist for a reason, you know? And like, why would you wake up and decide, you know what, I'm not gonna use speech marks today. People can figure out when people are speaking on their own. I am better than speech marks. Now I do have to admit with this one, I am inconsistent. I, <laughs> I love free verse. I'm quite happy to read a book with no full stops. Girl, Woman, Other, one of the best books I've ever read. Don't think that's got any full stops, uh, or it's got very few full stops. Um, I can't remember if it's got speech marks, but there is just something specifically about the lack of speech marks that really, really bugs me. And it was almost worse in Wolf Hall because sometimes it would have speech marks and sometimes it wouldn't. Sometimes in the same sentence, it would be like, in speech marks, duh, 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 said one of the many people called Thomas. And then the rest of his sentence, didn't have speech marks and I I just just put speech marks just just put speech marks in please for me moving on from speech marks to time jumps I don't mind dual timelines I love a good dual timeline but I've got to know where slash when we are <laughs> um, there have been a few books I've read where it'll be like one year later six months earlier three months later five weeks earlier, an hour later, two years earlier. And if you're not going to give me a timeline of events, you've got to make it simpler for me. You've just, you've got to, I, I need either two separate timelines or print literally a timeline of like what happened when, or give me like a day, a date. I can't keep track. My little brain can't cope with it. You gotta, you gotta help me. <laughs> If I can't follow the timeline of the plot, the back and forth, back and forth, it's, you know, time skips, I do not mind. It's the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in inconsistent amounts. 
I just, if you're going to have skips, use them rarely, be consistent, you know. I don't mind switching between like 1926, 2012, 1926, 2012, 1954, you know, 2012, whatever it is. If you're giving me years, fine. It's that kind of like, sorry, this is getting very angry. <laughs> it's that kind of everything being later or earlier than whenever it was. But because it's happening for every single chapter, you're just bouncing around and you don't really know where you are. Um, so yes, that is that is one, unfortunately. In a similar vein, switching first person perspective without telling you. Lots of different books switch perspectives in different ways. Um, in things like Spinning Silver, um, that was the only drawback of the book for me, was that every time there was a break, or well, not every time, it wasn't every time, that made it harder, there would be switches in perspective and it wouldn't tell you whose perspective it was from and sometimes a whole paragraph or more would go by before there was any identifying information and like i don't want to be a detective i want to know who whose perspective i'm with um some books do this by change of font i am a fan of the change of font as long as you have two three of the push perspectives monsters of men by patrick ness did this really well i think he also put the character names in um, but he definitely had switching fonts and I really liked that. Um, the I Am Number Four series, which started off strong, um, that got a bit out of control with the number of fonts and the number of perspectives. Uh, but, you know, the first couple of books, it was used really effectively. Um, I just, I just need to know, again, like with the changing time things, just, tr you know, I don't want to have to try and analyse this to work it out. I want to enjoy the story and be stuck into it. I'm not reading this for like literary analysis and detective skills i'm trying to have a great time reading a good book <laughs> so those are a few of my bookish bugbears i'm sure there are plenty more that i have not thought of um but please do let me know in the comments what your bookish bugbears are what are the things that annoy you in books be it like the physical book or in the reading of a book the actual story whatever it is let me know and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Ta-ra for now.